Well, joining us now, Alamogordo boys varsity soccer coach uh, Drew Player and uh, a couple of his players, um, Tristan Scumachi and uh, Cameron Davis. Uh, guys, how you doing today? Good, Charles. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Fellas? Uh, I'm feeling good. Good. All right. Glad to have you here. Uh, coach, you got through uh, tryouts last week. Uh, first off, you had an unbelievable turnout for tryouts. Talk about the number of kids you had uh, out there last week. Yes, we had uh, just over 50 guys out, which is an increase from last season. Um, we had a very good preseason uh, this year. We had close to 48, 50 sessions and you know, really got the guys going early on in the summer. And it's paying dividends already. Um, this time last year, we're already a step ahead of where we were. So, um, like you said, we got more guys out this year. And um, so we had to make some tough decisions to make the teams, uh, you know, pretty even. But I think both teams, top to bottom, are um, definitely better than what they were last year and a little bit more competitive. We got more depth this year, so that's good. And it's nice to have that kind of competition when you have that many guys that are come out and, and trying to work. I mean, i got to think that that's a, a big positive as a coach, right? It is. You know, I tell the guys every day, you know, when spot is secure, so it, it creates the healthy competition within the squad, which is what we want to see as coaches. So that way, you know, the guys are working to, to get better and pushing pushing each other every day. So. Yeah. Cameron, do you feel that competition within the team, knowing that, you know, there's a lot of guys that, that can be out there in the pitch at any given time? Oh, yeah, no doubt. Um, every practice when I'm out there, I see a lot of guys giving 110% because uh, they want to start in a game and they want to prove that they're a good player that um, can make a difference in the game, maybe get some wins. To ask you guys, I mean, you did a lot of uh, summer stuff. I mean, I was talking to Cameron before we came on the air, but uh, a lot of 3v3 stuff and then, of course, working with the team as well. Talk about uh, your summer, Tristan. What were, uh, what were you up to to improve in, in your soccer skills? Mostly just trying to focus on just being a better player. Uh, definitely like touching. I uh, getting a better touch on the ball, you know, increases my my ability to be faster on the field, more um, minded of players around me, stuff like that, and hope everyone else did the same. <laughs> All right, um, and you did play uh, you did play three v three with uh, with Cameron, right? Yes, yes, yeah. yeah, that was a lot of fun. Too. What's what's that experience <laughs> like? I mean, in terms of helping you out with your skills, I mean, I three v threes. I haven't had a chance to be a lot of those tournaments. <laughs> I mean. What, what what are those like in terms of, you know, obviously compared to being out there with uh, with 11 other guys or 10 other guys? 3v3 is a really fast game, so it increases your speed, increases your thought of, you know, your thought, um, a lot of changing of movement in the field, you know, when to track back, stuff like that. It's a lot of fun, too. <laughs> and if I, if I could comment on Tristan, it is a lot faster. Um, it is, obviously it's 3v3, so you get more touches on the ball, so it's more repetitions for you. Um, it's a tighter space. You get more 1v1 situations, which is good, trying to beat your man 1v1. Um, so it's a, it's a big game translated into a smaller game, obviously. But it, it's better for you because the speed of play is quicker. And, you know, it's just it's, it's a good developer. That's why you see with youth leagues, they're, they're smaller teams. Um, it's the same concept. Yeah. Cameron, how, how about you? I mean, you obviously you did 3v3s, and you also did uh, summer workouts with the team. Um, I learned a lot of things from Coach Rutter and some other players like Tristan and a couple of other players out there. I um, can't really like, pinpoint stuff that I learned out because it just comes naturally sometimes. But, uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun out there. Uh, a lot of the football training sessions with the Coach, uh, showing them some of my skills and stuff. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, it was a lot of fun, and uh, I feel like I got a – I feel – I'm a much better player now than I was last year. All right. So where are you going to have these guys out there in the field this year? What's the, uh, the look for, for Cameron and Tristan? Oh, Cameron, we're going to try it with him in the midfield again, you know, as a holding midfielder, maybe occasionally push him up further in the attacking midfield. Tristan, we're going to try him out a little bit on defense, being a center back. Uh, we just got to get him to be a little bit more vocal back there. But, you know, he's also talented enough to play in the midfield. So, you know, we'll kind of tinker around with um, – some of the guys we're going to play a different formation this year um and it, it just depends on as the season progresses who is able to play in certain spots you know you know we'll, we'll find out pretty quick in the big games who can succeed in which spot in the field and um, you know if we run into small injuries we might have to put some people elsewhere so you know it'll depend but um for these two yeah we'll primarily midfield for cameron and center center back for tristan and Maybe some midfield as well. All right, very good. Um, before we get and talk about some of the rest of the guys uh, on the team, learning from last season. Obviously, last year, you know, it was uh, a lot of hard work. You know, definitely the wins didn't come the way that you wanted to. But you 
there was a lot of promise that we saw from mm-hmm. this team last year. There's a lot of talent. Just getting it all fine tuned seems to be the the real key for these guys. Is that how you view this group? I do. Uh, last year, obviously, we were quite the young team. Uh, this year, I've only got one eighth grader on the varsity team. Last year, I had five. Um, so that that in itself was a huge disadvantage for us into games. Um, however, like I said, th- at this point last year, where we are this year now, we're a few steps ahead of where we were. Um, and I feel that our back line is a lot stronger than what it was last year, which is the that was the main reason why we dropped a lot of games last year is just defensive errors and inexperience. This year, um, you know, I feel the back line's a lot stronger. Our goalkeepers are, are stronger. Um, and, and I think last year we were in a lot of the games. You know, we didn't get – there was games, you know, we lost by one goal, two goals, and, you know, just simple errors. So I think this year if we finish off our opportunities, eliminate some of the defensive errors, you know, we're, we're right in all those games this year. So – Absolutely. What did you, I mean, Cameron? What did you learn from last year? I mean, obviously, you guys wanted to win more. Everybody wants to win more. But what what did you take away from last season, maybe to, to help you out going into this year? Uh, I learned that a lot of these guys are real true competitors. That uh, they never really want to lose a game by maybe one or two. Uh, they want to win every game by at least two or three goals. And so, if we're down by maybe three goals, they'll still give one hundred ten percent because uh, they still don't want to lose the game. So uh, it showed me, like, um, they were really promising for the future for Coach and uh, just for, like, this season when they're more experienced at the varsity level. It helps out a lot. Tristan, I mean, did it help you? I mean, you guys were obviously having to work through some struggles. Did mm-hmm. it make you stronger to make you tighter as a group in a lot of ways as, as a team? I Yes, I agree. Um, we, we've been getting stronger throughout the whole year, well, every year, because we play with each other um, – also, high school season, off season, we're always together most of the time, so we're always growing as a team, as yeah. as a unit. How, how do you feel like the chemistry of this group is? Do you guys all get along? Oh, yes. We're great. <laughs> we're a great team. We really are. All right, good. Um, let's talk about the rest of the guys. Uh, Adam, of course, uh, had a lot of goals for you last year. Is he going to be up there at, uh, at the top for you? Yes, Adam was our leading scorer last year, and we're looking to play him either in the striker position um, or even out in the flank this year, so... He's definitely got a lot of speed, so I think uh, he's actually more dangerous out in the flank. So we're going to experiment with him out there. Like I said, we're playing a different formation, a 4-3-3. So essentially we kind of have three strikers. Um, So with his speed on either side, you know, I think he can definitely do some damage. Um, We've got a couple guys that came in from elsewhere that are um, looking to add some firepower up top. So hopefully they – Hopefully they'll produce some goals for us, for us this year. Um, in the goal, we've got George and Diego coming back from last year, and we also have a new goalkeeper who came in from Florida. His name is Elijah, and uh, so he'll be adding to the competition in that in that net for us. Talk about the defense, and obviously we've, we've mentioned Tristan in there, but you had a couple other guys uh, like Malcolm and a number of other players that I thought played well for you last year. Who else mm-hmm. is going to be in that defense for you next this year? Okay, so Malcolm and Shamar actually – Unfortunately, they moved away. Did they? So, um, but we do. We are returning um, three other defenders, and they will be looking to fi- be fighting for a starting position right away. And that's Keith Wilder, Johnny Lucero, and Trent Tapley. Um, and those are the guys, along with Tristan, who will be probably making up our back line. And it's, uh, it's. I think it's a pretty solid back line this year, along with our our goalkeepers. So, um, be looking out for them this year. Because they'll be pretty tough to uh, to get through. What what are you kind of looking for from them this year? Obviously, you said that you, that you feel like they're much more improved. But uh, what in particular do you want to see from them, especially early on in the season, to feel like that they they've made that progression? Um, what I want to see for them is the desire to defend. You know, in my days, I was a defender, and I firmly believe that defending is an attitude more than it is an ability. You have to have that defensive personality, the the, the, desi- the desire not to be beaten Um, because you can see it in some soccer players um, you know it it comes down to your work rate you know some soccer players will want to attack 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 when it comes to defending you know they they get kind of lazy well when you're defending you have to be switched on 100 percent of the time you can't ever don't ever let the other guy get the best of you but for the back line as a group i want to see them you know we want to get some clean sheets this year. Try to eliminate goals because it builds confidence. The more clean sheets you get, the more you get. 
And one of the big problems we had last year was um, communication. So if these guys start getting in the habit of communicating more on the fields, um, it just makes you that much more organized as a unit defensively. And, um, you know, that's what we're looking for. So, Tristan, I mean, talk about the, the – communication that you need in in that back line with your your three fellow defenders i mean how has that been working with them and getting that ready for the start of the season well we're all really good friends back there so communication won't be a real big deal but just be louder <laughs> loud is is the key um if i'm whispering to people obviously they're not going to hear me so mistakes are going to happen but i think if we keep our heads and just communicate loud <laughs> We'll, we'll do good back there. Communication is part of it, but I, you know, also it, we talk about it in soccer all the time. I and mean, you guys are out there for you know four, two forty-minute halves, and you know there's no timeouts. You know, coach can yell yell things at you from the sideline, but you guys are kind of on your own a little bit in terms of having that uh, that trust in your teammates. Do you feel like you have trust in, in those other three guys oh, in yes. terms of know, knowing where to be at the right time? Yes, I trust all all the center back. I trust Cameron. I trust every single player on my team to do something that I ask or them ask me i'll do it for them you know i have complete trust cameron uh you got a couple other midfielders or i should ask coach first uh, who else who's also going to be in the midfield with uh, with cameron so this year in the midfielder uh we're returning antonio silva he'll be playing in the midfield this year we've got lucas birch who's coming up uh, he's an eighth grader this year um, we've got herbe bustamante who's returning um, alex flique who's also a returner Needless to say, there's going to be a number of different guys that are going to get their opportunities there yes, in the midfield. Yes, there certainly will be. Yeah. So, Cameron, I mean, I, I'd ask you, I mean, midfield is one of those positions where you're kind of expected to do a little bit of both. They want you to be busy on the attack, but also, you know, if you got to get back on defense quickly, it's 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 a pretty big challenge playing in the midfield, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's Most of the, the game pinned on the midfield is won or lost by the midfield, pretty much. Um, if we don't get back in the fin, pretty much, and help, uh, our defense is going to be left on an island by himself, uh, pretty much maybe 4v3, 4v6, uh, whatever, how much they might be. One of the, Some of our flank guys, uh, Trent Keith, might push up on the attack, and if one of us don't come back and cover for him, they, uh, Tristan and maybe Johnny, with uh, just them two by themselves. So it's pretty uh, key for us to get back and help on the defensive side of the ball. And going forward, too, uh, this year with our new formation, uh, we might have we don't have to like push forward as much, pretty much, because we have more players up there. But we see we still need to get up and help them, so we can move the ball around and uh, maybe get a shot on goal, maybe create some chances for goals. And probably more than anything else, coaches, in terms of you know building the break or getting things started, moving up the field for for the attackers, the midfielders are real important in terms of getting the, the passes. And I know you're you're a big guy in terms of lots of passes and and making sure you know you've got a lot of ball control out there, right? Absolutely. The midfield is a link between, you know, the defense and the attackers. So they're kind of like our – they're the engine. So if they, get the thing, if they get the ball rolling, you know, our attackers will finish it off. So as long as they're working together as a unit, everything should be pretty smooth. Do you feel like this can be – you know, do you want this to be an aggressive team in terms of having, you know, defenders getting into the attacking positions and, you know, your midfielders getting up there where you play a little bit – not necessarily play it safe, but maybe a little more conservative out there? Um, I think with how the game has evolved these days, I think it's important to get as many numbers forward, uh, especially your outside backs. So, you know, that's what we're looking to do this year. And with our new formation, it's a little bit more attacking than what it was last year. So, um, you know, we'll see how it goes. Um Coach Senior and I were looking forward to it, and, uh, you know, we're just ready to get this first game, yeah. get that first win. So, <laughs> What do you feel like the biggest strength of this team is overall? Like if you were, you know, to put one, one aspect of this group that you, you feel like is uh, the strongest? I think our depth. Um, I think we're well-rounded. We've got cover in every position. But um, maybe our hunger, because I know these guys are these guys are ready to go this year. So good to see um district this year i mean you got a lot of, well i guess we should mention non-district first you guys play a, a ton of quality teams in your non-district schedule you'll see roswell again this year i believe you saw chaparral again this year no no chaparral, no, no chaparral we'll see centennial we'll see las cruces yeah. we'll see santa Teresa. we'll see gadsden yeah, so yeah, yeah. all those schools in this southern region they're all top quality um so they'll give us a good challenge going into district hopefully we'll peak at the right time going into district and look to win that 
District 4, 6A. Yeah. What's your feeling on district? Have you got a chance to look at or have an idea of what the, the remaining teams are that are into this year where you guys stack up possibly? Well, I know that all three teams over there, they lost a good amount of seniors, particularly Hobbs. So, um, you know, I'm hoping that once we get to that part of the season, um, you know, we're going to worry about the non-district first because um, – Say if we get second in district, you know, they're going to look at your overall record. So it, it's important. It's vital that we take care of these non-district games and stay healthy and go into district with confidence and with belief so that when we get to these tough district games where they're, every game matters, every point matters there. Cause you get three points for a win, one point for a tie, and obviously nothing for a loss. So um, when we get to that point in the season, we need to be at our best and – ready to give it our all because if we happen to not win the district then states it's in the balance because i believe last year they took only the district winner which was carlsbad from our district so hobbs had a good record but they still didn't take him so it's all these non-district games are very very important yeah which so. shows the strength around the state albuquerque's got a right. lot of great teams up there usually yeah. so um what do you feel like you know Cameron what do you feel like it's going to take for this team to do to be able to to get get you guys back to state it's been a number of years since Alamogordo boys soccer has been there what's what's been the discussion I mean if there has been any discussion with you guys about what what needs to happen for you this year uh I just really think it's important for us uh to win the game tomorrow pretty much uh I think a lot of us want to start this season off great because last season wasn't um all that great uh but we did play very well last season it's just unlucky so uh if we just get a couple wins in a row, or maybe two or three, I think uh, we'll finish our full stride and we'll, we'll be a really good team to beat, pretty hard team to beat. Yeah. Tristan, I mean, uh, Mayfield obviously usually puts out there a pretty good program, first challenge at the start of the year. Uh, how are you guys feeling going into your first game coming up tomorrow? I feel great going into the game, honestly. Um, Mayfield last year, they were a good team. Uh, they lost a lot of size from the sound of it. So, and size, I mean... This these days, like Coach said, you know, uh, there's a lot of different things that happen on the field, but size is definitely one of them. It's like one of the uh, more important ones. But in New Mexico, you don't have to be six foot tall to dribble through everybody and score. <laughs> so it'll be good. We'll, we'll do good tomorrow. You feel, Coach? I mean, in terms of you know getting out there and scoring goals, do you feel like it's more going to have to be uh, you know? set pieces more on the break i mean where, where do you feel like you'll get your best chances with this group this year i think through build-up we have a possession-based style of play so i think if we can get in a good passing rhythm in games where teams down and just wait for a, an opportunity you know we rehearse set pieces pretty religiously we're going to do that today in practice so hopefully we'll be able to catch the, the opponent sleeping and knock a couple in on those because that's very vital and also last year i failed to mention earlier what our some of our problems were defensively um we failed to uh we had poor marking last year on set pieces i think we got scored on maybe once a game on a set piece so that's one thing that we will have to eliminate this year if, if we want to be successful so that's one of the things i expect out of my team not just the back line it's just to man mark better on those dead ball situations and uh and that all comes down to the desire to defend and communication it really is and um so so that's that's basically what needs to happen this year expectations for this team i mean is it based on win loss you guys getting to state or are you looking at just seeing improvement and you know this team you know making the 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 good choices out there and, and mm -hmm. making the right plays for, for throughout the season well you know we go in with the expectation every game to win um but i want to see this team play well you know there's going to be games where we might play amazing and the goals just won't go in at the end of the day if, if my team plays well and i know they gave it at their all you know that's what i'll be proud of um i don't think necessarily wins or losses should reflect on how a team's performance is in some people's eyes it is um but you know obviously if my team plays pretty poorly and we win i might not necessarily be pretty happy with that win so um and if we play poorly and we lose and you know we'll have some things to address so that's kind of how I view the win-loss thing. All right. Well, we'll see how the season goes for you. It opens up against Mayfield. Uh, 7 o'clock is kickoff at Reiner Steinhoff Soccer Plex. JV is going to play at 5 o'clock tomorrow. Uh, so get out there, support the guys, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing how the season goes. Coach, appreciate it. Thank you, Charles. Guys, thanks for coming in. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you.